Hey, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I got a crazy story about my Taylor 214 CE acoustic guitar. Um, it's actually one of two of them that I own. Actually, I own one and a half, and here comes the story. Uh, let's flip around the video, and we can see what I'm talking about. So here's that 214 CE. That looks okay so far, besides the fact that it's missing strings. Just the standard uh, lower end Taylor model. Still a very nice guitar. Um, like I said, I own another one. And this one, this one, as you can see, as we come down the neck, has got some issues. But what happened to this thing? Well, first of all, it's the only Taylor with a three piece removable neck. There's one piece, two pieces, and the headstock. So, what happened with this bad boy? Well, it's a crazy story. Um, I bought this guitar off of Facebook Marketplace for a hundred bucks from a songwriter named Sam August who had an issue with it and the issue was she left a 9 volt battery in the case which made contact with the headstock and the strings uh, I'm assuming and it started to fire in this portion of the case right here which burned out the whole case up to the little uh, storage pocket deal here and pretty much melted the tuners set the headstock on fire you can see the back it's uh <laughs> looks like uh something that's been sitting in the barbecue for a while uh you know this was actually after a bunch of work i first tried to restore it so i sanded off all the burnt off material and tried to see if I could make it work the way it was. This is the back of the top of the neck there, but just so much of the stuff had come away and it was so thin you could actually see, you know, where they mount the headstock there. And uh, at that point I just decided to uh, replace the neck. All right, so we're inside the body of the guitar now and you can see there's a serial number down there. Uh, Taylor's crazy about putting these serial numbers all over the guitar. I'll talk about that in a minute, but there is the mounting hole there. Let's see if I can get the focus any better. And uh, that's where you would attach the heel of the neck to the guitar. There's one directly above it. And then there's a third mounting point here where you mount the fingerboard uh, to the top of the guitar. This is a shim here. It says, I believe, negative four. I've got another shim that goes on the front here. Let's see if we can get any light into there. And uh, look, the serial number again. Here's the shim that lays in there, and this is two. Uh, I know there's a shim kit for these, and I don't have it, so I'm hoping that the neck, which is arriving today, and the reason I'm making this video, is just gonna bolt up and, uh, you know, play decently, just out of the box. I'm not really sure, like I said, I think there's a lot of different values for these shims, and I have no idea if the neck I'm getting is just gonna match up, or, you know, I'm gonna put it together and I'm gonna hate it. Not sure about that part. Anyway, Taylor is very protective over their patents, their designs, all that stuff. So they will not allow you to just order a uh, replacement neck unless you are uh, able to prove to them that you've destroyed the one you had before that had the issue. Clearly, this has an issue, as you can see. So I actually had to saw it in three pieces like this and take a picture of it with the uh, serial number there also in the picture to show that this was the neck that came from this guitar and uh, that I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> make counterfeit Taylor necks or something or other. I'm not really sure why they're so protective and I don't know why you couldn't just unbolt, uh, you know, a neck from any Taylor guitar and, you know, try to make copies or something. Not really sure. But in any case, this is what uh, they asked me to do to get the neck uh, replaced and uh, it was really re uh, pretty reasonable 168 bucks or something or other to get a neck back from Taylor for this $1,200 guitar and uh, it's even coming with tuners and a nut I had it sent to a guitar tech friend of mine in Winston-Salem and it was just easier for him to get it for me and he's shipping it out to me today uh, in the meantime I've got another guitar that's pretty much trashed so I thought I would try to recreate today while I've got some time and I'm waiting for my neck to arrive. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to recreate the accident that happened with this guitar here. Uh, we'll see if we can set my other guitar on fire. Let's go outside and uh, see what happens. All right, here's the next guitar we're gonna look at here. And this is a 1970 uh, 
cheapo Gibson Hummingbird copy. I bought it for two reasons. One, because I really love uh, the pickguard on this, and two, because it came with a nice case, and I actually needed a case for my Taylor 214 CE. I figured once I put it together, uh, if this guitar was a total basket case, I would just use the case from this thing. What is he doing? Look at this dog. What are you trying to get at? I'm trying to make a video here. Anyway, so um, I thought, yeah, I would just use a case from this guitar and see if I could maybe restore this thing. It played terribly. Uh, I ended up putting a new set of tuners on here. I had originally put on the 214 CE uh, because the ones on there melted in the fire. Um, it really just didn't play very well and the neck was warped and weak and the wood was so thin so I decided to get that replacement neck. Anyway, I bought this like I said just because I wanted the case and I thought it was kind of cool. I worked on it about three or four hours. It still played terribly. I really couldn't figure anything to do with it. I thought maybe I'd use it as a slide guitar or something. I don't know. In any case, I just ended up leaving it outside and it got filled up with water. And within a month, this is what happened with it. The fingerboard totally separated from the neck. Look at that action there. You can stick your whole hand under it. Anyway, so it's a goner. Uh, but it's a good test case to see if I can replicate the accident that happened with the tailor. And we're gonna do it right now. Uh, I don't wanna waste a case. Uh, so there he goes again. There's nothing in there, buddy. Hey, buddy, there's nothing in there. All right, so um, we're gonna try to replicate what happened, which from what I understand was that a battery touched the strings, shorted out and caused a fire in the case. You know, the case has all that fluffy material. I don't know what it is. It's some sort of uh, artificial, uh, you know, who knows what uh, that uh, is probably pretty flammable. Uh, so I'm trying to replicate it here with just a couple of napkins. I got a nice big bucket of water here in case it actually works. I don't think it's gonna do anything, but we'll see. By the way, EBL batteries, they're pretty good. Uh, you can get them on Amazon and I use them a lot when I do sound. Let's see if I can, uh, I don't know, is it gonna shock me if I do this? <laughs> I'm not really sure how to do this. I think I'll cut and uh, see if I can figure this out without electrocuting myself. All right, so I've tried to uh, reproduce best I can the accident that happened with my tailor. I've got the string shorting out the battery here. Uh, the battery got real hot and I immediately started to smell smoke. Um, again, it's kind of touching some um, flammable material, which is kind of uh, replicating what happened in the guitar case. Um, who knows how long it was in there touching? Could have been hours, I don't know. The story I heard from Sam was that uh, she had no idea what happened. The guitar was sitting in her trunk. She opened it up and uh, smelled something funny and saw smoke coming out of the case and the guitar had already extinguished itself and burned, you know, halfway down the neck. All right, um, I can safely say that after almost one minute, this is really boring and nothing is happening at all. Uh, but my dog is still trying to dig up under the fence here. So at least that's something. I will come back to it in a minute. Oh, is it smoking? No, that was just a shadow. Kind of looked like smoke a little bit, but uh, yeah, once again, it's shorting out and I can smell a little bit of funny stuff, but uh, nothing really is catching on fire here. All right, well, it's been about five minutes and I'm getting bored and nothing is on fire. Uh, the battery itself is hot to the touch. It's clearly shorting out, but it's not catching any of the napkins on fire or anything. Uh, who knows, it's gotta just be a fluke where maybe uh, the lack of, I would think the lack of oxygen would, you know, make it less likely to burn, but I don't know. For some reason, locked inside that case in the car, uh, the battery indeed, I have to believe the story, uh, shorted it out and set the headstock on fire. Ah, uh, it's not doing it here, but uh, who knows, maybe it was a super strong battery or something. In any case, hey, we gave it the old college try. I'm still waiting for the neck to show up. It's supposed to arrive today. I'll show you my other 214 CE for a comparison. Uh, the story on this one was I had never actually played a Taylor 214 and I only had half of one sitting in that case there. 
this whole project has taken months uh, to get uh, a neck from Taylor because of the uh, pandemic, the factory's not really uh, working at full capacity, and uh, they have to make my neck from scratch, apparently. Uh, they didn't have one in stock, or I'm not sure, but it was custom cut just for me, is what I'm understanding. Uh, anyway, I went down the street to uh, Atlanta Discount Music, which is a great little uh, boutique uh, guitar shop, and sure enough, they had a used Taylor 214 CE. I think this one's maybe a little newer. I I don't remember the years anymore. I looked them up at some point. I think Sam's was around 2006 or something. Maybe they didn't even make them back then. I don't know. Uh, I remember Sam's was older and this one was maybe, I don't know, six or seven years old. I think this one's a little newer. Or maybe it's the other way around. Getting old. Who knows? All right. So here's the other 214 CE. I'm hoping to make one of these today. Out of the uh, half a guitar I have in the basement. Um, Really nice playing sounding guitars, uh, again, on the lower end of Taylor Acoustics, still made in Mexico, um, with that uh, curved back that doesn't have the bracing. Uh, they play wonderful. They're really, uh, you know, just great sounding playing guitars. The necks feel really good. Usually I like a thicker neck. This is kind of a thinner neck, but um, again, real easy to play on a gig. I don't get fatigued. This is kind of my go-to guitar now. Uh, we can take a look at the headstock here, uh, terrible lighting. This is some sort of wood veneer. I suspect the one I'm gonna get will just be black, but uh, in any case, there's my other 214CE, and hopefully we'll get to see the one I put together real soon. Here it is with Shuggy and the rest of the daily haul. It's become an unboxing video. Let's see what we got in here. My guess would be a guitar neck. Let's find out. All right, it's definitely in there. Pretty cool. And here it is. A very nicely appointed Taylor 214 CE neck. Straight from the factory uh, compared to the other one. I'm actually surprised it's a nice kind of dark wood veneer. I thought it would just be black. Uh, some differences, black truss rod cover instead of the wooden one that I have here on the other 214. Uh, front markers are smaller. The dots are smaller. Um, otherwise, it's got a finished nut already, and it even has a strap peg installed in the heel. That's what the heel looks there, like there for a 200 series guitar. Uh, this one is not cracked, <laughs> like my other one. Uh, back of the neck, very nice, all nicely done. This is killer. So, let's put this on the guitar and see what we get. All right, about to assemble the neck. So there are the two bolts that hold the neck on and screw into the heel. You can see I've reinstalled that shim. Again, no idea which shim is correct for uh, the guitar. I know they make a shim kit. I'm just hoping I'm going to screw it together and get something decent. If not, uh, you know, it's easy enough to take it apart and put uh, different size factory shims in there. I guess I'd have to order those and wait another six months. Uh, anyway, those bolts are 12 millimeter socket uh, size bolts. The one that secures the fingerboard is a hex head, Allen head bolt. I'm not sure the size of that, but uh, I probably got that sitting around. And... Uh, I'm gonna bolt this all together and then we'll see how it plays. So first what you wanna do is reach in and finger tighten the uh, fingerboard bolt that bolts to the top of the guitar. I'll push down a little bit on that. And that will keep the neck in position. Then I am just once again hand tightening the bolts on the inside. You really don't wanna to torque these too hard and I am very guilty of often cranking things down just one turn too many, so I'm gonna be real careful with this. I don't wanna crack that neck heel like the other one was that came out of this guitar previously. So I will just take my time with this. Uh, you kinda of gotta feed the socket in. I've got maybe a four inch extension and just find that bolt and turn over so slightly and be careful because the electronics are right next to that. And the winner is the 3 16th. Allen head wrench. Again, just kind of snug it up in there so you feel some resistance. 
And look at that. All done. It's got a nice little white uh, plastic piece on the heel there. All nice and snugged into the guitar. Feels solid. Um, again, you don't want to do those bolts too tight. And at the end of the day, if they loosen up, you can always retighten them. I don't know if you can see in there without the flashlight. Yeah, you can. So there, there's a, usually a sticker that covers up those bolts inside there. Uh, you have to remove that when you um, tighten the bolts. So uh, I guess that's one way to tell if a tailor has been messed with or not because the sticker is gone. I think, in fact, they'll make another sticker to put over there, but I'm just going to leave it off in case I need to readjust. All right, well, flag on the play. I knew it was too easy, uh, too good to be true. Still not complaining, but uh, the nut is just barely scored. So clearly it's not cut or anything. The string is sitting proud on top of that when it should be at least level with the top of the uh, nut, if not a little further in than that. I've got some files here. I'm gonna probably mess this up big time and have to send it out to someone who knows what they're doing, but uh, I'll give it a shot. We'll see how it comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. Good as new. Well, not quite. It still does need a bit of work. Uh, some of the notes are fretting out. The low E is buzzing. Uh, it's not such a big concern because I use a capo a lot of the time, but uh, it still doesn't uh, do it for me like my other 214 CE yet. Uh, you know, I'm sure it can be improved upon. Uh, maybe the shims uh, are not correct here for this neck. I'm sure everyone is different and maybe one that pushes the neck out a little farther uh, would work better for this or maybe just naturally that'll happen in time. Uh, in any case, it's a serviceable backup. Uh, I paid $268 for a $1,200 tailor, so uh, <clears throat> not so bad overall. Anyway, this is Rob, the middle-aged guy who brought this guitar back to life. The phoenix that rose from the flames. All right, signing off for now and we'll see you next time. Middle-aged guy